Thank you so much, Marky uh, Kuskenyami. Can you um, tell us about what your field is? And, uh, uh, My academic field? Yes. So I'm a lawyer. And uh, when you started in this uh, field, what was your intellectual uh, project? So I started as a practitioner. And as a practitioner, I just had a project of being a good practitioner as I could. I came to the university after 17 years of practice. I didn't have a university career before that. Uh, did you have any anticipations of what the field uh, would uh, become? <laughs> so, uh, the field, when I think about the, the practice that I did, was defined and understood very differently from what the field then turned out to be when I entered it at the university. So I would say, generally speaking, that these two understandings of the field, that one in practice and that one in university, do not have much conversation with each other and are politically and ideologically and intellectually oriented in very different ways. And I certainly do not think that one is the cause of the other. They tend to develop independently and through their own internal laws and struggles. You believe that there has been a significant progress since uh, the time period when you were a student, or when you started to be No, started? no progress, no. How come you are so skeptical? No, it's not a skeptic, it's just a, a position. How do you, so I'm, I'm in law, how do you measure law, progress in law? That would be a big question. And to say that there's been progress would be an immensely contentious thing to say. And my colleague would say, well, Marty, what do you mean? And where do you look at, etc. In as much as the law has to do with the way in which we live, well, has there been progress in the way in which we live? I'm very uncertain about that. But when you say that there has been no progress, implicitly that means that you have a measure of progress. Well, I rather say I don't know whether there's been progress. I'm dubious. Many things that people hold progress to me doesn't seem so progressive. Um, and on the other hand, I'm uncertain about what the relationship between the legal doctrines and that, that we rehearse at universities and the, or the legal practices that we undergo in government offices and in private law firms and in international organizations, what the relationship between those two and then some sociological reality out there is. And I have no theory about that. Based on uh, your knowledge of the field, based on your also your teaching in, uh, in different places, uh, in different countries, uh, do you have a sense of what your field will become or is become? Well, there's clearly a sense that it's fragmented and it's, I mean, everybody always says that every moment is a moment of transition. And what Adam said to Eve, well, he said that Eve now we've entered the period of transition when they were chased from paradise. Um, and so one would have to be very, very careful not to say it's a period of transition. But let's, let me put it in this way, that the, the professionals and the academics in my field would feel that, that there is a fragmentation going on to the extent that more specialization is taking place, that you can no longer be a generalist in the way that you were in the past. You have to know more details in order to be a professionally or academically plausible operator out there. That is the, um, the sense in the profession itself. Now, I have to put a caveat here. It may be the case that professionals always thought this way. And th there is a nostalgia in this popular discourse about fragmentation that I find objectionable. Um, now, the nostal nostalgia towards a past period when it wasn't fragmented, when knowledge was uniform, the practices were clear, and the way forward was uh, well uh, laid out. This, to me, sounds implausible. I don't think it was ever like that. Now, the fact that 
the common understanding is that the field is fragmented, is an ideological understanding, doesn't necessarily mean that the field wouldn't be also de facto fragmented. Uh, again, you're, you're teaching uh, uh, at different universities. Uh, some of them have a very important role uh, uh, in academia at the global level, and their project is also very universalist. Uh, many students from different countries of the world gather in those places. How do you see the future of academia? Since there have been so many changes recently in the structure of ac academia, how do you picture that? Change. Yes, so one would have to be careful not to be nostalgic oneself. Um, and I suppose uh, the academia is, historically speaking, always been the best at times when it's felt most threatened. In those moments, the best thinking and the most critical work is undertaken. I think this is a moment when many people, including myself, feel that the academia is threatened by two interconnected things. One is the in increasing managerialism that has entered the academia. The other one, and we can talk about what that means, and the other one is the um, call for immediate measurement of output in all fields, so that you can have quality uh, control and quality standards which, through which you can measure the performance of particular academic units, which is an important part of the managerialist ideology that enters the academia. Uh, now these are both anti-intellectual, politically and politically objectionable uh, moves, but I think they also wake up, wake, have awakened many academic people to the dangers that are out there and to the outright stupid, stupid non-academic interests that people are, uh, and powerful people have about turning the academia to serve their interests and their projects and their purposes. Mm. Uh, but, uh, there have been moments in, in history, uh, 18th century Germany, for instance, in which the German universities, which developed in a, in a very unique and important way at the, at the time, were also constantly being harnessed by the German princes uh, to their state-building purposes. And you had to struggle for independence at the same time. Um, I see this moment, perhaps, as somewhat similar. And uh, what would be an ideal uh, trajectory for academia? What would be an ideal future for academia? Yes. Um, so, uh, research. I think the old idea of the academia where research is free um, and is not tied with short-term uh, economic or uh, political interests is important. Very important is to maintain the connection between research and teaching. So the, the tendency to create teaching institutions and research institutions separately is completely objectionable. And, Research. So students, when they enter the academia, should immediately be in contact with the research work that the professors do. I realize that it, this is hard to operate physically and, uh, and, and in practice, but that is, I think, immensely important for the constant renovation of the research and for the teaching to be a dialogical uh, thing that how it takes place between the professor and the students. Do you see the borders between discipline evolving in the years to come? I see an immense disciplinary struggle take place. So the different disciplines are constantly trying to hegemonize each other, trying to overtake each other. This, this is nothing new. So 
I've done some research on the development of the European University, the struggle of the faculties. So the first, the, the three higher faculties, law, theology, and medicine, and you know, who was the head in the university, then the philosophy faculty developed its different curricula, uh, struggle between. So these people have always struggled in the university. I think that's part of the dynamism. Academics are people of, of power. And as people of power, they have their academic tools to go about uh, it. I don't, so I don't think this is in itself uh, bad at all. It's uh, um, to be connected with the struggle of power is, gives life to the academic work and presses it forward. Ambition is a big thing about being an academic. Do you think that the law um, occupied that hege hegemonic role? No, I think, so economics clearly is occupying a hegemonic role, so law is being marginalized, so pol uh, political science and, and, and economics uh, are, have become more hegemonic now. I think sociology used to be hegemonic maybe in the 70s, etc., but so nobody in their right minds is doing sociolo sociology any longer. Um, you know, these things go, come and, and go, and one should just be very um, uh, careful not to be in the sinking boat at the wrong moment. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing those thoughts. Thank you.